If you remember back in like 2009 to 2013, the MacBook Air was very popular because it had an excellent keyboard, trackpad, and battery life for around $1,100. There was also one for $1,000, but that was the 11-inch model, not the 13-inch. And then came the 2016 MacBook Pros that started at $1,500 for the non-touch bar model. Like that's a huge jump in price if you wanted to upgrade your MacBook Air, but still wanted Mac OS. Like you didn't want to use Linux or Windows. With this new model, there's four key changes that I think make it worth upgrading to, particularly for 2015 users who have been holding out because of all the issues with the 2016 redesign. It's $200 cheaper now at $1,000 for the base model or $900 for students, which to be honest, isn't even exclusive to students. All they need is a student ID number, doesn't even have to be yours. And I've even been offered a student ID to use from an Apple Store employee, didn't even know the guy. So if you're unethical like me, or you're not in the best financial situation, then for all intents and purposes, it's $900. Now the three biggest criticism, I guess, with the previous MacBook Air were the keyboard and the thermals, which also means performance. It also came with 128 gigs of storage at the base model, but that's now been doubled to 256, so I don't consider storage upgrades to be a necessity anymore which means it's actually $1,000. You don't need to spend more money to get it to a usable spec. Now, let's talk about the keyboard first. These use the same switches as the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which they call the Magic Keyboard, and I consider these to be more comfortable to type on and more reliable than the butterfly switches on pretty much everything from the last four years. The key travel is still quite short. The tactile feedback is good, but not as tactile as something like the Surface Laptop. If you're coming from the 2015 MacBook Pro keyboards, this will feel like a downgrade in terms of like typing experience. But in terms of my typing speed and accuracy, it only took me a couple of typing tests to get up to 115 words per minute. So it was really easy to get comfortable with. Performance has been slightly improved on the base model from last year. It's like 5% faster. You can upgrade to the quad-core CPU for an extra 100 bucks, which is pretty good. So if you're a photographer or a programmer, you will benefit from the faster CPU. But what those two things have in common is that they don't require sustained performance like you do with gaming, for example. Not that this is a gaming laptop, it's just to give an example. So when you adjust the colors in a photo, for example, it takes a second to render those changes out and bam, your CPU is done. Or if you're a developer, you hit run and it takes a couple seconds to compile your code and that's it, right? The issue comes when you're working the CPU at 100% for an extended period of time because there's technically no active cooling on this. Like there is a fan inside and it pulls air in from the right, the air goes across the CPU heatsink and gets exhausted out the fan on the left but the CPU is not attached to a heat pipe, so this can only dissipate about 9.5 watts of power. If you compare this to the MacBook Pro, both the 13 and the 16 inch, the 13 inch Pro is able to dissipate about three times the amount of power, which means it can run at higher clock speeds, and you can see the faster performance in the benchmarks. Uh, everything else remains the same, but I'll just do a quick recap for you so you don't need to go back and watch a full 2019 MacBook Air review. Build quality is great, it's got a full CNC milled anodized aluminum case, the fit and finish of everything is spot on. The screen and the keyboard deck are both quite rigid, the hinge is also tuned very well. It's one hand open, it doesn't fall shut when you tap on it, but I noticed that there is a fair amount of screen wobble. I mean it's not a touch screen and it's not particularly bad, but I did notice it and I thought I'd mention it anyway. The trackpad is excellent, it's the best trackpad on any laptop by far. It's got a smooth glass surface, tracking is accurate, same with the acceleration curve. You can click anywhere on the surface, like it doesn't get stiffer near the top because there's no hinge on this. And you can also adjust the actuation force in software if you want it to be lighter or heavier. That's a neat feature. It's running the same screen as last year and it measures very well in all categories. It's more than bright enough for indoor use, but not quite comfortable for outdoor use. If you're a photographer, graphics designer, or content creator, this screen is just about perfect for everything except for HDR footage. The speakers also remain the same as far as I can tell. They're loud, vocals sound natural and detailed. The dynamic range on this stands out as particularly good from other Windows laptops. The bass response is also pretty good, but the MacBook Pro is a bit better all around. Not by a lot, you'd actually have to listen to them side by side to tell, but 
they're really good speakers all around. I'm getting around 9.5 to 10 hours of battery life with light use and screen brightness at 90%. It's closer to like eight to eight and a half hours if I have Discord and like a couple more tabs open in Chrome. But yeah, it's a comfortable full day battery life. So those are the three big changes with the 2020 MacBook Air. It's actually priced fairly well, it's faster, and it's got a more reliable and a more comfortable keyboard. If you're not a heavy user and you're just looking for a good MacBook that's not too expensive, this is the one. The 2020 MacBook Air is the laptop that I think you can openly recommend to just about everyone. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you liked it, and I will see you next time.